What's up, people of the world? Uh, welcome to Tech Tea Talk 2, or Tech Talk 2. I still haven't figured out the name completely yet. But anyways, it's a place where we just I turn on the camera and I talk some tech. And I got four stories today to talk about some interesting stuff, some AI stuff, some Fitbit, uh, Google stuff, and some Mr. Beast stuff. So uh, let's get into it. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, let's just kick it off. I don't really know what else to tell you, but other than let's just go, let's go. First of all, and today I got screen recording on the motherfucker so you can see what I'm doing, which I thought was maybe fun and more, more candy for your uh, dopamine addicted brains. Attention spans being ruined by the modern world. Sorry not to go on a rampage about, about that. Anyways, first story is about uh, Google Assistant, which is very exciting. And it's something that I noticed at the developer conference with Google re- lately. Or, or yeah, lately, recently. Um, I don't remember which exactly when it was, but anyways, they were talking about stuff. Where, oh, that's when they uh, announced the fold and they talked a bunch of AI stuff. They said the word AI a bunch of times and it was all cool and exciting and nice. And now the world is finally going to change and you're going to see how Google has been working on AI in the background for so many years. And now it's finally coming to fruition and really surfacing as with a lot of other AI stuff, ChatGPT and such are. But one thing I was very disappointed not hearing about was news about Google Assistant because Google Assistant is the best assistant that's available right now. I got a, a Google speaker here. God damn it. Um, I use it sometimes. I got, a, I got you know, Android phone, Pixel, and uh, I've been on iOS as well, talking to Siri. It's not as good. Um, I've been generally impressed with the performance of Google Assistant throughout the years, the last maybe four or five years or something. You know, it's been kind of cool sometimes. It does things, it understands stuff, this and that, the third. You can ask it to do stuff. It, it, it recognizes your voice pretty well and all that stuff. But my respect for Google Assistant has dropped tremendously after the uh, arrival of ChatGPT. Because when it comes to having a conversation with a smart artificial intelligence type assistant, it is just doesn't. It just looks like a literally newborn child in comparison, right? It, do, it just doesn't understand that much. And you have to speak very clearly and correctly worded and shit like that. And it's just bullshit. Um, now there is a difference. You're not you're not writing. You're you're speaking to it. So there's a difference there. But I've just been thinking like, why 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 can't what, what's stopping Google Assistant from being as smart as as uh, ChatGPT, right? And 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 from Google implement, implementing their speech recognition software so they can have a live conversation. We already have now at the, at the moment where you can speak to Google Assistant. It answers, and then right after it answers, there's this feature called continuous conversation where it then listens again for a few seconds to see if you have some more things to say which is nice. I just tried that yesterday. Actually, I didn't know that uh, was a thing, but it is. Um, but if they can combine that with, with like a langu- large language model, which has access to, to the live internet or even just a recent internet, and you can just talk to it li- live and you know, they improve the speech recognition with, a- with the help of AI as well to the point where you can literally just have your Google speaker sitting in the room and it's like you have a, a whole artificial person sitting there in the room with you. You can just talk about a bunch of stuff. Just talk freely. You don't have to be completely grammatically correct about everything. It'll, it'll understand it. It'll figure out what you mean. Try to, you know, you have a conversation, a live conversation. It's very interesting. The only difference is, uh, you know, if you compare it to a real life conversation with a human, oftentimes you, you do some sort of interrupting or like you speak a little bit overlapping to make it more human and more engaging uh, conversation. That might be kind of tricky to do with the, with the software like that. But... But even without that, it would just be cool as hell. But as you can see here, they're gonna supercharge assistant with AI. That's more like ChatGPT and Bard. Also, I've also played with Bard recently. Actually, it's not as good as ChatGPT by my experience, but but it's, it's nicely designed, and, and I'm sure it's gonna get that pretty soon. So, but yeah, uh, you know, speaking of that, Bard is already out. So Bard is already Google's answer to ChatGPT, which is up there. So what if they just combine Bard with Google Assistant, right? Put that voice on. But it seems like they're doing it now, which is why I have the story. It seems like they're laying off some some people and they're focusing the team and they're talking about how they um, are really taking it seriously. And a lot of people are, say hundreds of millions of people use Assistant every month and we're committed to giving them high quality experiences. A Google spokesperson, Jennifer Redstrom, said in a statement to The Verge, which is why I'm reading this. Um, we're excited to explore how LLMs, large language models, can help us supercharge the system and make it even better. Um, so not not anything you know announced or like when we're gonna see something, but but definitely cool. And I'm so looking forward to like getting this right um, available. Just in my like it would just be epic, man. 
Because right now, you know, I, I use ChatGPT quite a lot actually to, to, you know, on and off. Sometimes I have like very de- you know intricate conversations with it, talking about interesting stuff and stuff like that. I'm just so impressed by it, and it's very fun. And it's very nice. And every time I want to know something about something, um, I just ask that one instead because it's, you get just more, uh, you know, more of a summary of a bunch of information. It's more used to navigate. It's more, uh, you know, it's less overwhelming and stuff like that. It's just more fun, and you can you can learn about something, and then you know. He answers. I almost said or she, whatever the fuck it is. It answers, and then you have a question regarding some part of the answer, and you can just directly ask about that, like you do with a person, right? It doesn't have to be like a newly, you know, formulated question or something, which is unique and very nice. But and I have this um, feature on um, on the ChatGPT where you can where you can uh, use your voice and then it records and then put in puts in the text and then it answers with voice as well. But it's very it doesn't work pretty it doesn't work at all that well. So I don't use it. But I just imagine like imagine when we get that we can just speak freely with a uh, with ChatGPT right? Damn. And then you put a personality on it that gets creepy and wild at that point and it's very possible I already at a moment. But even without that I would be fine just having a smart ass capable knowledge based person thing that I can just. Uh, speak well, I walk into my kitchen, walk into my home, and I got some questions on my mind, some of this and that, you know, I want to hear about something. And I just go, hey, hey Google. Or oh, it's not plugged in right now. I just go, hey, Google, and I just, you know, uh, ask it about something. Um, and um, and we just have a conversation. I might, I might just be walking around the home just talking to the to the robot. How, how weird and cool is that? Some people might say it's creepy and weird. Uh, but I think as long as it's, it's uh, at the state where it's not trying to, you know, become your fucking girlfriend or some weird shit, as long as it's just sort of, um, just like a professional conversation or whatever, like a knowledge-based information, factual conversation, intellectual conversation, genderless conversation, you could almost say, right? Um, um, that's cool. And I don't think it's that creepy. I think it's just fucking amazing, honestly, bro. So that's really cool. That's really it. It was just, uh, I got excited when I saw this title. I was like, all right, cool. All right, so next story uh, is some more Google AI stuff, actually. Hold on, let me just get some water. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. But some more AI stuff is in regards to YouTube, which is a feature they're trying out. It's a video summarization feature that I've seen a little bit of this. I had some AI plugins. I played with them and put them uh, on my Chrome browser where you can go into a YouTube video and then it pops up and you can get like a summary of what a video is about, like it, which is cool because it, it watches the video and the AI analyzes the thing and summarizes the point. If you, It's especially helpful. It's not, you're gonna, you don't want to do that for like, entertainment videos and stuff like that. You want to do it for like information, like a tutorial or like a news story, something, whatever, you know, or like an in-depth video about something. Um, and um, and then it just summarizes it for you. And apparently they're trying to do this where they they make a little AI description summarization of the video or summary of the video that's in the description next to the actual human made description or and also even on the on the homepage of YouTube. There would be like a little summary of it, so it's like so you know what it, what it's about, and you know that you can trust that what it says there is what it's actually about because YouTube watched the video for you and and made a, a summary. So it's something they're just trying out for a few few uh, accounts. I don't think you I don't think you can roll enroll in. It's like a beta feature, or something. It's not out yet, but it's it's you know YouTube they be playing with some different uh, features every now and then. Um, but um, um, so yeah, um, let me see if there's something interesting here. Yeah. It may require a YouTube premium subscription. I see that. Uh, it probably is. YouTube is really starting to push that. You know, you can even, they're even uh, like, if you want to watch full quality bitrate videos on YouTube, you have to have YouTube premium stuff like that. They're trying to upsell that motherfucker a little bit, which is fair, I guess. You know, they got to make their money. Um, another thing I also, uh, f- uh, you know, uh, noticed in this article is uh, they just mentioned this search generative experience, which is just one of, again, on the subject of still Google's AI future releases search generative experience uh, maybe i'll go into that uh, later at a later point more depth but really what it is is that which is something i'm also eagerly waiting for is that they're trying to they're they're working on you know reinventing the way you google things generally because as i just said i, I already use ChatGPT in in, in spe- instead of google actually sometimes when i want to get some you know some information about stuff because often when you search in google it's just like it's sponsored articles and weird sort of stuff they're trying to sell you and it's just it's not really that trustworthy you can argue ChatGPT also isn't that trustworthy but it seems to you know collect it from it seems to you know i read it with, with a grain of salt when it gives an answer but i feel like all right there's something there and i can look more into it and 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 if, I, if i'm skeptical but what they're trying to do is that they're trying to do some sort of thing where it's not really a language model but it's like a 
uh, it's more of a intuitive way to search. I heard them at one point talk about how in in in, in, in uh, third world countries that are getting access to the internet, they they're seeing that people's intuitive you know thing to do when they go into the internet and want to figure out like find out about something they just go and they search a whole question you know a whole long question specific type of thing right and google doesn't really work that well we all know who the, those of us who you know use the internet internet for 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 a long time you know that you kind of have to be a little bit a little bit tricky sometimes when you want to search you know maybe you also you know your grandma she also maybe does that writes a whole sentence and you're like my grandma you can't do that and like but they're actually trying to make it so that you can do that so that the the, so that Google understands the question and the context, and then it finds stuff for you. So it's not all the way to to Bard like language model, but it's not just basic searching. It's more like you can you know get more specific with it. So I just wanted to you know I just you know showed up here now. It's like that's cool. It's a cool tool. But anyways, uh, Google or YouTube summary is apparently coming, and that's interesting too. It's interesting to see stuff like this. Uh, released from the, the the actual real players because you can get like plugins and stuff like that, but it's, it's it's never really as good. It feels kind of a little bit bootleg and a little bit, you know. You don't. I don't really. I didn't fall in love with it. Let me let me put it like that. But I feel like if YouTube releases it themselves, it's gonna, you know, they you know they're kind of more careful and and they sort of do do it when it's when it's actually written because they have so many customers or like uh, users that would care a lot if it's if it's as you know and it'll just be annoying and stuff like that so they, they care more about it than some plugin that you can just you know ignore and maybe play with if you're enthusiastic and stuff like that although google is also you know known for deleting you know killing a lot of stuff though but anyways that was it so next story it's also Google. I have a lot of Google. Three, three Google stories and a Mr. B story. That's what it is. Right? I had to live with that. That's what I, what I found for you today. But this is about the, it's just a short one. It's about the Fitbit app getting updated, more streamlined, getting the material you look, which is interesting because uh, I, 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 I uh, was quite interesting when they, when they released the Pixel Watch because it's like, all right, they're, they're actually making a full ecosystem now by the looks of it and it looks clean. The, the watch is clean looking and stuff like that. And it's Google Originals, uh, Pixel type of vibe but they, they they bought fitbit prior to this and they now launched a watch with the google health app but it's also conjoined with the the fitbit app which is kind of outdated outdated and not not really google looking and kind of weird and i was thinking like what are they going to do with that it's kind of not the, the and i've heard some reviewers said it's annoying they have to set up two accounts and two apps and it's just weird and it's just not that intuitive but what they're doing is that they're slowly making it so that it's just going to be Google and they're, they're going to kill off Fitbit slowly. Maybe not in the name, but kill off the, you know, make it, you know, merge it into Google. Uh, they're going to do that slowly because they have a lot of, of, of Royal Fitbit customers. But, uh, but they're doing that. They're also doing the thing. It says somewhere here that they're doing the, uh, I don't know what it was, but they're talking about how they want to um, uh, push it so that you convert your Fitbit account into a Google merge account so that it, it merges with that. And new design material material you by the looks of it looks pretty clean um and it's it, they say it matches the leaked pixel watch two faces which you can see somewhere let me just look here you go which is this stuff here which is also nice interesting it's gonna be interesting to see they're gonna release a pixel watch two watch uh, pixel watch two uh soon with the pixel 8 and 8 pro too so it's good you know google is uh google by the looks of it google are uh, you know they're, they're, they're coming along a little bit better, you know, coming to fruition. I like it. But yeah, uh, you know, an inevitable thing and a good thing, I think, to, for the user experience in the end. You want it to be clean and, 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 and fit in with the rest of the system and stuff like that. So, not, so it's not this awkward thing. Um, but they're going to keep the Fitbit name for a while, I think, because there's so much brand name value in that, you know. It has so much more value, Fitbit, than Pixel Watch. You know, nobody really knows what that is, right? But, but they're, you know, they can keep that and still have it. You can, they can just be Google Fitbit and look googly and have a Google account and there's no weird, weird stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how, if you have to have a subscription though, because there are some paywall things. I guess they're going to continue with that. Fitbit users are already, uh, you know, accustomed to that anyway. So, you know, it makes sense. Um, makes sense. All right. But that's that. So, the third story. All right. All right, the last story. Mr. Beast is suing his ghost kitchen partner over. Uh, I can't speak. So, last story. Mr. Beast is suing his ghost kitchen partner over inedible Mr. Beast burgers, which has just caught my attention because I've been following him a little bit. I heard that he recently uh, announced on Twitter on X that he um, 
that he, uh, he he's moving away. He's moving away from Beastburger. It's it's not really what he's he likes to do, and it's just uh, yeah. He wants to just focus on uh, on on feastables, the chocolate bar thing. Um, more passionate about that. He's going to do drinks in the future. He said also, which is interesting. But I, I just remember it, it caught my attention because back when he released the Mr. Beast Burger, and they, it, it you know it arrived in like I think it's seventeen hundred uh, restaurants you can see here across the country, uh, which were these ghost kitchens. Which I soon I later found out that it's like it wasn't actually the restaurant, which makes sense because you can't build that many restaurants that quickly. But it was like he uh, made a, like online app where you can order food that then gets produced by all kinds of different random restaurants who just get the recipes and the instructions and then just make the food uh, which is a good idea and you know in concept at least and it worked good uh, during 2020 at the uh, under the pandemic because a lot of stuff was closed so you, it was just take take away anyway so you did you didn't you didn't need to go into a beast burger restaurant you didn't you know it wasn't part of the experience anyways and he made, then he opened an actual uh, as you can see here uh, an actual restaurant with the whole they had a big launch 10,000 people or something came so that was one actual store I don't know if that one is still open actually I'm not sure um, but the ghost kitchens had like they have a problem as you can see by this picture right here that the quality control is inevitably gonna be a problem probably and it is also it, it's also a problem here where it's just hard to really keep up a good standard and it ruins the reputation then of Mr. Beast who is not you know, it's hard to really keep up with everyone. Uh, and there's been some some pretty nasty cases with raw meat and, and, and inedible stuff, as, as the title says. And now they're apparently suing, it says that he's suing his partner um, over this thing, which which was the one who was in, like, in, in um, leading this operation. So uh, I don't know if it's gonna, like, there's some drama there, maybe some money stuff, some something i don't know how much it really rep, you know ruins his uh, it's funny with mr beast because i read this and i i see this and i'm like i'm kind of forgiving maybe i'm i'm too forgiving but i'm just it makes sense and they're shutting it down it was a little too much you're not you're not really angry i feel like at mr beast it wasn't it wasn't his fault or maybe it was it is weird it might be but he's moving away from it and he's doing a little a little lawsuit to get some some what some money maybe i don't know but yeah um, but I'm actually quite interested to see how he, because uh, I thought Beastburger would be like a big thing, but apparently not. But in Feastable, he's pushing that pretty hard, and he says he's going to do beverage beverages in the future as well, uh, like we've seen with Prime, which has gotten pretty fucking big. And you know, Mr. Beast has a big following, and drinks just, they, I think they sell pretty easily. It's just drinks, you know, like uh, like refreshing hydration drinks are just nice and and fun. It's a weird thing, you know. We, also, we we recently got the tour to my country, uh, the prime drinks, and there's, I know it's just going to be some some sh like sugary, tasting water with some fruit taste or like nothing crazy, right? It's it's not that crazy, you know. It's not it's not that popular because it tastes crazy crazy good. It's popular because of Logan Paul and KSI and I know guys, but but there's just something about I just I haven't bought one yet because I didn't well, I didn't you know I didn't buy one yet, but I definitely feel like I need I want to I need it I need to try it you know. Because there's just something you know about it and it's so shiny and, and it's just it's so understandable right it's a drink that tastes good and your brain just wants that fucking juicy deliciousness right it's weird uh even but even more than chocolate i think you know it, drinks are just easier and they're and there's something subconsciously more healthy about it i feel like you know i don't know if it's just me but it's like eating a chocolate bar it feels less less healthy than drinking a drink maybe it's, it's even the same amount of sugar though and like chemicals and stuff like that but it's just something subconscious about it but so I'm curious. I'm curious to see like where, where he's gonna take his his business, the you know entrepreneur type of side of his of his thing in the future, um, Mr. Beast. I like that guy. I like that guy. I think those uh, were the stories of today, of today's tech talk. So uh, that's it. That wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna find some new stories for next time. And if you if you by a chance is actually watching this, which you probably are if you're hearing my voice right now, feel free to uh, to have a discussion in comments questions i'll answer them we'll figure something out you know if you want some you know have some some subjects that you think are interesting and stuff like that, i'm really curious to see and i'll uh, take a look at them and um, i'll see you next time have a great day i'm out <laughs>